I've always said it's really important if you want to get to know a place to learn the language and try the wine, which is why I'm learning German in the Barossa Valley. Sorry, I, I think there's something a bit wrong with the script here. In fact, there's nothing wrong with the script. I'm here in the town of Tanunda in the Barossa Valley, 60 kilometers northeast of Adelaide in South Australia. Even though the Barossa Valley is one of Australia's most famous winemaking regions, all around, there are reminders of the culture that the 19th century immigrants arrived with. They came from Eastern Europe, modern day Germany and Poland, and that Germanic flavor from street names to local shops is everywhere. German was commonly spoken here for over a century. This Lutheran church established here in the 1870s really tells the story. This town, and indeed the Barossa wine industry, owes its existence to the Lutherans who fled here from Europe, seeking a place where they could practice their religion freely. It was a long and dangerous journey, but for those that made it, one of the first things they did was plant their roots. The first that took hold were the vines. I'm heading to Chateau Tanunda, Built in 1890, it is the oldest and largest chateau in Australia. There to meet me is Dr. Peter Micken, Senior Lecturer in Linguistics at the University of Adelaide. He's working to preserve the language and culture the Lutherans brought here, specifically through the language, Barossa Deutsch, or German, which was widely spoken until the Second World War. Amelia, trinkst du Wein? Ja. Oh, ja, und äh, du trinkst gerne Wein? Gerne es schmeckt, Wein? schmeckt no. gut? Nein. Nicht? Nicht. Ach, das ist schlimm. <laughs> <laughs> Now we can speak English. So when people think of Lutherans, they don't often think of boisterous wine drinkers. How was it that actually wine became such an important aspect of the first Lutheran settlers here in the Barossa? So the early German settlers came here to be farmers, so here they could have their own land yeah. and they could decide what they did with it. And they had small holdings, small mm -hmm. farms, so cows and poultry and pigs. And then they also had vines, a yeah. vineyard, and that was really quite important because it was a cash crop, yeah. you know, so they take it to the wineries and these um, small landholders would sell the grapes. But one of the things that was central was the church. So they were not boisterous, drunken drinkers. They were very serious, mm -hmm. earnest, with the church being the center, really, of their life. There is no more iconic church in the Barossa Valley than the one here, on the edge of the legendary Hill of Grace vineyard. The vineyard is owned by the descendants of one of the families who immigrated here in the 19th century, the Henschkes. Johann Christian Henschke planted the first vines here in 1862. Each generation has built on his legacy, and it's here that the world-famous Hill of Grace Shiraz is now produced. I wonder if Johann Christian ever thought that the wine he produced in his family vineyard would sell for upwards of 300 pounds per bottle. When he arrived here fleeing persecution, having lost his wife and child on the journey, his life was anything but easy. We do have some of the original vines, vines really? planted, which mm, are over here. Fantastic. We call the grandfathers, and they were planted back in the 1860s. Those pioneering days would have been hard work. Everything was done by hand. You know, they may, may have had a, 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 a cow or a, or a, a horse or something Drop to horses. help. Yeah. yeah. But it would have been enormously hard work. Stephen Prue and daughter Justine represent both fifth and sixth generation Henschkes to produce wine here. So we've been talking a lot about family heritage and legacy, and that leads me on to you, Justine, because you're sixth generation. Yes. Your brother is one of the winemakers, along with Stephen. Yes, we feel very strongly about um, leaving this to the next generation. So really, we're just caretakers, and we have huge shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we hope to do the best job that we can. 
It's a very busy time here. Grapes being picked, blends being tested, wine being fermented. Johan Henschke, Justin's brother, has begun working alongside his parents. An important part of Johan's job in the winery is to sample wine made from different parts of the vineyard. And I'm lucky enough to be here when they are ready to taste this year's new Hill of Grace. This is still fermenting, building its tannin and uh, its flavour and and, uh, and a spice character. Spice is mm. coming through, yeah. Those vines have been putting grapes out every year for 150 plus years. <laughs> and they still just keep producing these beautiful, intense flavors. But nothing's more exciting than the final product. And what better way to end my time here than by tasting the legacy of the Henschke's historic wine. Here we have the 2010 Hill of Grace Shiraz. Oh, wow. This hasn't yet been released, has it? No. So oh, you can, you've excited. come at a very good time. It's really, really still a vintage. This one's been decanted, so let it uh, open up. This is a bit young. Oh, but there's already so much going on. Mm. So from what we tasted in the fermenter tasting to see this now in its Five in years its later. Form, mm. And yet it looks so youthful, yeah. even at five years of age. Incredible. Prue and Justine are taking me bowling Lutheran style. The game has not changed much since the 1850s, when the first alley was built. The club these days is not adverse to a little recreational incentive. Drink this. <laughs> Barossa Shiraz. Barossa Shiraz, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having a glass might be a modern addition. Ah, oh, now, yes. But the rules have not changed since the game was first played. To score from one to six, you score one to six. Knock over seven, you score 12. Oh, right. OK. And if you knock over eight, you score 18. And you knock over nine, obviously, you score 24. In the middle, there's a red one called the kingpin. If you knock them all over and leave that one, that one, and that one standing, you score 15. If you miss the whole thing altogether, you get a poodle. German for a near miss, bad luck, or something like that. But anyway, you score minus one. Hang on, we've lost someone. Today has been completely enlightening. I got to really experience the true Henschke legacy, from the grapes in the vineyards, to the awesome juice tasting in the winery, and the final grand tasting itself. But today really was not only about getting to know a wine, it was getting to know a family. <laughs>